Hi everybody, so this, it's a motor, and that might seem like a strikingly dumb thing to say, but it's the kind of motor we've been using for decades, if not centuries, and of course you have to remember that motors and generators are electrically identical machines. With a motor, if I put power in, it'll spin, like in a generator, if I spin the same machine, power will come out, so they're identical, so understanding one is about understanding the other. Now this particular kind is called a radial flux device, it's called radial flux because the the flux so is just as the lines of magnetic force follow the radius, they go around that way. And of course there is a new kid on the block and that new kid on the block is axial flux. Axial flux is because the flux goes that way, parallel to the axis. Now they both have their pros and their cons. One of the big issues with motors and generators of course is the competition between the electromagnetic flux and the permanent magnetic flux. It gives you a situation where you get back EMF. Now it would be great, wouldn't it, if we could combine radial flux with axial flux to reduce the competition between the two different flux paths. And of course we can. We can do that in a machine called a transverse flux machine. A transverse flux machine is a machine that in combines the component of radial and axial flux, reducing competition and creating a much more efficient and compact machine. Now, it's not that difficult to build, and to get hold of it, it might be a good idea to have a look at how one is built. If we grab a load of C-shaped data pieces, these are just lumps of silicon steel pressed down and glued together in this C shape and in that C shape we arrange them in a ring and that ring is going to become the stator, that is the bit that doesn't move. Now if you notice on that ring there is a gap between the two parts of the ring and a big old section in the middle. And that big old section in the middle is the bit where the toroidal coil goes, so we just wind a normal coil and stick it in there. Toroids have a flux path that is axial, so the electromagnetic component will be axial. The radial component is just a rotor. The rotor has a group of magnets on them where the number of magnets is twice the number of pole pieces in the stator, so it's twice the number of C's gives us the number of magnets that we need, and those magnets are shown in different directions, with the red in one direction and the blue in the other direction. So we stick that rotor in the nick of the C-shaped stator coil where that gap was, and that gives us a line of flux that can pass around the C-shaped stator coil, and that is in essence how they're made, and it gives us the radial flux component. So that's basically how it's made. How it operates is pretty simple. When you rotate that rotor, of course, the magnetic field changes direction because we made sure that the magnets were in opposite direction. That changes the flux passing through the C-shapes and that leads to generation. Now of course as a motor we would put power in there and that would drive it, but as a generator that's how it works. We have in fact made variations of this because the different topologies, the different ways of putting it together are quite variable. So I had a look around. And what I found was this. This is the outer case of a radial flux motor, a normal motor. And as you'd expect, it's a lot of silicon steel with these little fingers sticking in there, stacked up, and this is where the coils go. So I peeled off a couple of those, and this what you get is this. Now, two of those together are about a millimeter thick, so I peeled off four, giving me a two millimeter layer. And what I want to do is cut every second one out of those things. When I've done that, what I've got are these. We've got two metal plates, 12 of these little prongs pointing into the centre with a good ring of silicon steel around the edge. Now if I put two of those together and rotate a magnet in there, then I'm going to be able to swap this and this north-south, north-south, creating a field going in that way, the axial direction, as long as I rotate some magnets in there. So, what I need is some magnets. So, what I've got is an acrylic disc, and in that acrylic disc I've drilled a whole load of 6mm holes, 24 of them, 15 degrees apart. And the reason for that is, there's 12 of these, 30 degrees apart. So, if my, mag if my acrylic disc is there with some magnets in, and that magnet has the north face pointing here, then in that position, 
all of the norths point to the little fingers, which means that the orientation of that will be north. Move it 15 degrees, then all of those will change to south. The south will now be pointing at that, and the orientation of the field will be south. So every 15 degrees of rotation of the plastic disc, I'll be able to flip the magnetic field in there from north to south and north to south. And of course, if I put another one on there, this will be in the opposite rotation. So although that's north, that'll be south, and so on. And what I'm starting to get, obviously, is a generator, because what I need to do then is wind a coil around here, and that should generate. Let's get a whole load of six mil by three mil magnets and stick them in my acrylic disc. Okay, so I've stuck a load of those, six millimeter by three millimeter, in my acrylic ring. And they're really cheap, actually. It's about a fiver for a million. Uh, I mean, not, I think I paid uh, about 10 pounds or 120 of them or something. Anyway, that's my rotor done. Now, with this bit, what I've done is I've cut a bit of acrylic and put a um, bearing in there. That glues on there, and then we glue a plastic ring on it, and we get that. So that's only the piece of metal plastic ring, which is five millimeters deep, and then a bit of acrylic with a bearing. And of course, our rotor goes in there like that. Then we take our second piece here and fix that in line on top like that. Glue that whole thing down, put that on, and we're ready to wind our coil. So let's glue that down. And there's it put together. Now, I put 200 turns of wire on it. I'm not sure of the gauge, but it's about 0.1 millimeter thick. And we're going to give it a spin up, see if we can get anything out of it. And for that, I've got this headlight. Awesome, eh? This takes three AAA batteries, um, so it's putting out about 4.5 volts or something. It's round about 70 to 100 milliamps, which is pretty awesome from this. Okay. So that actually worked pretty well. Now, for ease, I just used two flat plates of steel. It would have actually worked better had I put a steel ring around the back of it. But the thing about transverse flux motors is that they're cheaper to build, it's only one coil, they're all pressed steel parts. They're much more compact, making them more energy dense, and they are far more efficient. You'll find them in the research with people looking at them very seriously because they don't need gears. So they can be directly connected to a wind bar, a turbine or directly connected to the wheels of a vehicle, and that makes them exceedingly attractive because, of course, if you get rid of gears, you get rid of inefficiency and you get rid of maintenance. They do have the drawback, if you like to think of it as a drawback, is they are quite high torque to get turning. But once they're turning, they're also quite powerful generators. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.